Today we're going to talk about finding the area of a trapezoid. But before we do, let's review exactly what a trapezoid is. So a trapezoid is a quadrilateral, meaning it has to have four sides with one set of parallel sides. Not two sets, just one set of parallel sides. Remember, parallel means that they would never meet if they continued on and on forever. So if we look at this trapezoid, this is one that most people are used to. It's kind of the, the standard first one you ever learn trapezoid. And it's a trapezoid because this side is parallel to this side. And that's the symbol that means parallel, the little arrows like that. So that makes it a trapezoid. But not all trapezoids look like that. For example, trapezoids can look like this. where they sort of look like they're on their sides almost. And then here's our set of parallel, or it kind of, it, it, it looks different, like it's been turned over or something like that. So sometimes people don't recognize that one. So that's a trapezoid. And even something like this is a trapezoid. People often don't realize that this is a trapezoid. But again, it meets the definition. It has four sides, and two of those sides are parallel. So that is a trapezoid. So that is the figure that we're talking about finding the area of today. And there's a lot of different ways we could look at this. And we've sort of looked at some of these already. Um, for example, I could look at it and, and say, well, um, this makes a rectangle and two triangles. And every parallelogram does that. It makes a rectangle and two triangles. The triangles may or may not be the same size. Well, it makes at least one rectangle or square and a triangle. This one only makes um, one triangle um, because it's a what's called a right trapezoid because one of the sides has uh, or one of the, it has two right angles rather. So that's one way that we could find the area of a trapezoid. If we could get all the dimensions we need, we could absolutely do it that way, split it into parts. Remember the word for that is decompose. We could decompose it, find the area of each section, and then add all of those sections together. So another way we could do it, if you look at a trapezoid, a trapezoid, if you put two of them together, for example, if we look at this one, and we made two of them that are exactly the same, I could turn one of them around, and when I put them together, look what they're going to make. That's going to make a parallelogram. Now you may say, well, that's just because, uh, because of the type of trapezoid that that was. But let's see if it works for other trapezoids. If we look at some other trapezoids, this one's going to work. It's absolutely going to make a parallelogram. This one's also going to work, and you might say, well, that's not a parallelogram. It's a rectangle. And yes, it is a rectangle, but remember a rectangle is a type of parallelogram. And Here's one more example. This one is also going to make a parallelogram. So every trapezoid, no matter the, the shape or size of it, if it's a trapezoid, it's going to make a parallelogram when you put two congruent trapezoids together. So let's talk about then, we know how to find the area of a parallelogram. We know that we find the area of a parallelogram by doing base times height. And again, that's the area of a parallelogram. So if we look at the parallelogram that we can make from the trapezoid, then if we notice this parallelogram has a base that is the same distance as what we would call base 1 and base 2 on the trapezoid. In other words, the set of parallel sides. So to find the area of, or to find the base of the parallelogram we could make with two trapezoids, we have to add the, the lengths of the two parallel sides. We call those base 1 and base 2. Notice then that if we measure the distance from base 1 to base 2, and remember we have to do a perpendicular measurement. If we measure that, that's the same as the height of the parallelogram. So notice, if we wanted to find the area of the parallelogram we could make, we would have to do base 1 plus base 2, because it takes both of those to make the base of the parallelogram. And then times the height. The height of the parallelogram and the height of the trapezoid are the same. 
if we only want to find the area of one of the trapezoids, one of the trapezoids, notice, is only going to be half of the parallelogram. So that's where we're going to have to go back and divide by 2. So this section lets us find the area of the parallelogram we could get from, from putting two trapezoids together. And then we have to divide by 2 because we don't want to know the area of two trapezoids together. We want to know the area of just one of the trapezoids. So that is our rule for how we find the, the um, area of a trapezoid. So let's look at some examples of that. So here's our first trapezoid. First thing we want to do is we want to identify the two sides that are parallel. So when we look at this, our parallel sides are here and here. That's going to be our base 1 and base 2. And it really doesn't matter which one we call base 1 and which one we call base 2 because if we're adding them, the order in which we add them is not going to matter. That's what the commutative property says. Order doesn't matter when you're adding or multiplying. And then the height is the distance between the two of them measured at a right angle. So this is going to be our height. So now we have picked out base 1, base 2, and the height. And we're ready to use our formula. Area equals base 1 plus base 2 times the height divided by 2. So we're going to plug in our numbers that we, need, that we have or put in the numbers we have. So that's going to mean 39 plus 31 times 15 and then divide by 2. This is the point where I would say get a calculator out. But if you get a calculator out, do make sure that you use the parentheses and whatnot and put it in exactly the way that the problem is written. And if you do that, you should get 525 and the unit is going to be square inches. So our area of that trapezoid is 525 square inches. I want you to notice that if you were to make a clone of this trapezoid, notice that when we rotate it and we connect the two, we're going to get a parallelogram. And that parallelogram would have a base that is 39 inches plus 31 inches because this distance here would be the 31 inches. It matches that side. So it would be 31 inches. So the base of the parallelogram we would get would be 31 inches. That's why we're doing the 39 plus 31. It gives us the total length of the base of the parallelogram we can make. And then we're multiplying by the height, which is the 15. And again, the reason we're dividing by 2 is because we only want the area of one of the trapezoids. And one trapezoid is half of a parallelogram. So that's why we're dividing by 2. Let's look at a couple of more examples. So here's another trapezoid. Now, at first glance, people will often want to say, okay, wait, 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 here is my base because that's on the bottom. And then here is my opposite base. Mm, there's a problem with that. Those two are eventually going to cross. So those cannot possibly be my bases. My bases have to be parallel, remember? So let's try that again. When I look for a set of parallel sides, I'm going to see them here and here. And then when I want to see the distance between those two measured at a right angle, this is going to be it. Now, some of you might have some trouble seeing that, so let me make a suggestion for you. Instead of looking at it this way, instead of looking at it this way, turn the figure so that you're looking at it, once you identify the, the base, turn it so that you're looking at it with the base on the bottom. For most people, turning it that way or rotating it that way is going to make it easier to see. These are my two bases and this is my height. So now when I use my formula, area equals base 1 plus base 2 times the height and then divide by 2. So base 1 is 7 plus base 2 is 5, times the height of 4, and then divide by 2. When I do that work, I'm going to get 24. So the area is 24 
square meters. And again, notice that if I were to make an exact copy, a clone, or in other words, a congruent trapezoid, and rotate it 180 degrees, when I put those together, it's going to make a parallelogram. Technically, rectangles are parallelograms. And notice that that parallelogram here, it's this section that's not included on the um, length is the 5 meters. So 5 meters plus 7 meters would be my length. That's 12. And then 12 times my width of 4, 12 times 4 is 48. But again, the divided by 2 is because I only want to know the area of half of it. So 24 square meters. Let's look at two more. Here's our first one we're going to look at. Here's our next one, I should say. So on this one, again, look for my bases. The, the base 1 and base 2 have to be the two parallel sides. Well, this one's pretty easy because it's got the markings on it that show that this side and this side are parallel. And the measurement between the two of them, the height line, is this one. So when I plug my numbers into my formula, I'm going to do base 1 plus base 2. times the height, here's my height, and then divide by 2. So put in my numbers, 28 plus 7 times 8, and then divide by 2. So I'm going to then get my calculator out probably for this one, because those are some bigger numbers, and do the math. And when I do that, I'm going to get 140 square centimeters. And just to be sure that we see that we can still make a parallelogram from two of these, so there's going to be our parallelogram that we could make, could have made from those two, from two congruent trapezoids. Let's look at another example. This is our last example we're going to look at. So when I look at this one, I'm going to see, hopefully pretty quickly, that these two are my congruent sides and that this one is my height. So, or, sorry, the 20 and the 9 are not congruent, they are parallel. So these two are my bases because they're parallel and then the 15 is my height. So I've got a base 1 and a base 2 and I could say this one's base 1 and this one's base 2. Base 1 doesn't have to be on the bottom or anything like that and there's my height. So my formula is Area equals base 1 plus base 2 times the height and divide by 2. And when we do that, we're going to get 20 plus 9 times 15 and then divide by 2. Again, these are some pretty big numbers, fairly big numbers, not necessarily easy to compute in my head. So I'm going to get out my calculator. And when I do that, I'm going to get 217 and 5 tenths, or 217 and a half. So 217 and 5 tenths square meters. Again, I could make a trapezoid that is congruent to that. And if I do, and I turn it, or rotate it, and then put the two of them together, it would make a rectangle. That rectangle would have a length of 29 because I would have the 20 from here plus the 9 from this section together to make 29. And then I would be doing 29 times 15, just like what we did on the top of our, um, of our problem. So the reason then I would have to divide by 2 is because I only want this part, just half of it. Now, you may be saying, couldn't I have taken all of these and split them into the rectangles and the triangles and just been able to figure out my area that way? And yes, you could have. Let's look at one or two of them that way. So this one would have been fairly easy to do using that method. For this one, we could cut it right here. And that means that we're going to have this part in blue, which is a rectangle, and that rectangle would have a length of 9 and a width of five, 15 meters. So there, my area is length times width, so I would do 
15 times 9. And when I work out 15 times 9, I'm going to get 135 square meters. Then that leaves me with just this triangle. And this triangle is really half of a rectangle. So even if I didn't use the, want to use the triangle formula, I could figure this out. This triangle is half of a rectangle, and that rectangle is still going to be 15 meters tall, and this section is going to have to be 11 meters. And the reason it's 11 meters is because I know this part is 9 meters, so this part has to be 11 meters in order for the two of them together to be the 20 meters that I had right here. So that's why they have to be 9 and 11. So with that being said, then if I wanted to find the area of the red rectangle, I could do area equals length times width. So I could do 15 times 11, which is going to give me 165 square meters. But remember, I only want just this triangle. That's only half of the rectangle. So I would have to take that and divide it by 2. 165 divided by 2 is going to be 82 and 5 tenths square meters. Once I've done that, now that I have the 135 square meters and the 82 and 5 tenths square meters, I can just put those together. 135 square meters and 82 and 5 tenths square meters. And I'm going to get 217 and 5 tenths square meters, which is the same answer that I got before, just getting it a different way. So there's more than one way to do this. You can absolutely do it by relating just to what you know about rectangles, or you could use the, the formula for area of a trapezoid. When you get to one like this, you could still do it this way. And when you do... The rectangle in the middle is probably the easiest to figure out first. That one would have a length of 7 centimeters or a, and a width of 8 centimeters. So area equals length times width for that section, which is going to be our 7 times 8. So 7 times 8 is 56 square centimeters. So that part is 56 square centimeters. It gets a little trickier when you start looking at the triangles because we don't actually know this distance for sure and we don't actually know this distance for sure. The only part that we know for sure is that this part is 7 centimeters and we also know that all three of them together have to equal 28 centimeters. So for the two parts I don't know the two of them together have to equal 21 centimeters because this part is 7 centimeters. This, because we've got the 7 centimeters here that we've already used. So that means that the other two parts together have to equal 21 centimeters. It really doesn't matter what distance you decide those are. You could decide that this one is 14 centimeters and this one is 7 centimeters as long as all of it together adds up to 28 centimeters. So 14 centimeters plus 7 centimeters plus 7 centimeters equals 28 centimeters. So you could do that. And if you did that, then you could figure out that this section, that rectangle is going to have an area of 7 times 10, which is 75 square centimeters. But then divide that by 2 because I only want half of the of the rectangle. That gives me um, 37 and 5 tenths square centimeters. And then this part over here is half of the rectangle I could make that would be 14 by 8. Oh, we need to go back to my last one that I looked at just a minute. It's not 7 times 10. It is, hopefully some of you have already caught me, it is 8 by 10. This distance is, or not 8 by 10 either, it's 8 by 7. Um, this distance is 8 centimeters, and this distance is 7 centimeters. We don't need the 10 at all. So we would be doing 8 times 7, and 8 times 7 is, again, 56, but we would be dividing by 2, which is... 28 square centimeters. Sorry for the confusion there. See, it's even confusing for me when we get a lot of information there at the same time. So 
This is not my preferred method, but we could absolutely do it this way. So especially if you're having trouble remembering formulas and such, then all you have to really remember is the rectangle formula, and you can use that for pretty much um, any of the figures we're going to look at, triangles, parallelograms, trapezoids, and whatnot. So let's go back to the one we did in green. The one in green is going to make a rectangle that would have a length of 14 centimeters and a width of 8 centimeters. And 8 times 14 is 112. So we get 112 square centimeters. But remember, divide by 2. I only want half of it. 112 divided by 2 is 56. So the area for that section would be 56 square centimeters. Now that I have the areas of all three parts, which is the 56, the 56, and the 28 square centimeters, I could add them together, 56, 56, and 28. And when I add that all together, I'm going to get 140 square centimeters, which is the same answer I got before, just getting it a different way. So whichever method you choose is fine. You choose the method that works the best for you. I highly recommend that you use highlighters or colored pencils or something like that to help you mark your bases, mark your height, to split your figure into parts. That can really help you to see it better.